starting to record this. All right. So, so once again, welcome. Thanks for uh, joining us on this uh, student-free day uh, early in the morning. Uh, so glad you're here. Uh, our goal for today, uh, there at the bottom of the of the slide, is to become familiar with some of the possible uses and misuses and inappropriate uses of uh, AI. Um, in, in education specifically, uh, the, the goal criteria for us for today is uh, if you can take at least one idea presented today and use it to help help you tackle the, you know, the, the difficulties that AI poses in our line of work. Um, you know, if you take an idea and, and run with it, uh, we'll, we'll call that a success. So that's, that's what I hope to uh, provide for you today. Uh, again, if we've never met, my name is David Rivas. Uh, you can you know, read about me right there. Uh, that's, that's me. And our agenda for today on the screen there is uh, uh, we're going to start by just looking at ways to cheat, right? And probably the most obvious way to cheat, uh, I'll show you how I um, used a prompt to make an undetectable essay. Right, so we'll 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 show I'll show you that. Um, Want to uh, show you and and start a discussion about the uh, possible mis and disinformation that can come from the use of AI. Uh, Want to look at the pros and cons of using uh, AI detectors. There's a lot of them out there, and and they they have some uh, pretty. Um, high claims right and so we'll 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 put some of them to the test we'll we'll test their guardrails today live and see uh or I, i'm actually not live I'll, i took screenshots and I'll, I'll show you that um and then uh you know we'll we'll wrap it all up with some principles for and examples of uh i, I call it ai proofing just to you know for lack of a better term really it's more ai resistant i guess uh you know, I don't think we'll find anything that is AI proof, you know, exactly. And so, so there it is. So that's what we're going to be looking at one, one more time. Um, those of you who are just joining us, welcome. So glad you're here. We are recording and I have put the uh, presentation slides link in the chat. All right. So let's, uh, let's jump into some of this. So again, today, the, the, um, goal here is to look at designing AI resistant assignments. So that's going to be, you know, if you get some ideas for that, we'll, we'll call that a win. Okay. All right. Uh, shameless plugs here. This is number two in a three part series, right? Uh, yesterday and last week, we looked at um, sort of a smorgasbord of different AI tools that are available. Uh, today, we're looking at um, uh, designing AI resistant assignments and uh, tomorrow we'll, we'll conclude this and uh, we'll focus on using AI as an educator. We'll take a deep dive into some of those tools that were shared yesterday and um, with the goal of saving you time as, as a teacher, right? So that's what we'll be looking at. Uh, these will be on YouTube. So part one's already on there. So you can go to my YouTube channel and see it and relive our um, our crazy times together if you uh, want to uh, do that. So uh, as these wrap up and, you know, I have some time, um, I'll put them up definitely by this weekend. So, all right. Um, just want to uh, kind of, if, if this is the first time you're joining us for one of these, just want to kind of hone in on what it is we're actually talking about. It's uh, generative AI. Specifically today, it's going to be mostly on large language model AI. Um, so in other words, it's um, like autocomplete in your text messages or in your email, but like on on steroids. It's, it's very powerful, so much so that uh, you can carry on a conversation with it, and it appears to be a human-like conversation, right? Um, the most famous of those is ChatGPT, probably also the most popular one, right? And so that's what we're going to uh, be looking at uh, mostly today also. And uh, lots of cautions, right? And when we're talking about cautions, uh, I would be remiss if I don't point this caution out first, is that uh, if you... It, ask the companies that 
put these together. These are not meant for children to, to use, right? Uh, ChatGPT, for example, um, uh, it, in order to create an account with OpenAI, you have to say that you are uh, over the age of 13. And if you're over the age of, of, of 18, you can, you can make your own account. If you're within the ages of 13 and 18, then you have to have parental uh, permission. Um, yeah, and somebody asked for the link again, no problem. Here you go. All right. Um, all right, and then uh, it's not limited to just ChatGPT, but also uh, Google's Bard, right? Um, it's not meant for children, and so because most of our users in, in our uh, domain, right, in our uh, district are children, uh, we don't have access to Bard uh, because, you know, th that's the majority of who, who, who would be using it. And so, um, you know, we'll, we'll uh, talk about why that this is in, in, in a little bit here, but uh, regardless, kids are using it, right? Um, you know, um, some for, um, you know, bad purposes, like for, uh, for plain old cheating, some for uh, maybe less terrible purposes, like inspiration, right? Um, so there was this article in, in the Chronicle of Higher Education that was published in May. Um, the, the title of the article, or the op-ed actually, is, uh, I'm a student, you have no idea how much we're using ChatGPT and professors can't even tell. Uh, really fascinating read if you you know if if you have the time it's it's not too long but uh, the the student there uh, is a graduate student at Columbia uh, you know kind of spills the beans on how he's used it to like just plain cheat but also to help him save time on some writing assignments that in in very creative ways that I, you know kind of can't really fault him for right. Um, uh, one uh, quote that really stuck out to me was this, sort of his conclusion here, where he said, the uh, reasonable conclusion is that there needs to be a split between assignments on which using AIs uh, is, is encouraged and assignments on which using AI can't possibly help. And I thought this was a great insight coming from a student, right? Where, you know, like he, he realizes that, yeah, this is, uh, this is actually really helpful in some ways. But it's uh, it's it kind of made me lazy in other ways, and so we need this balance of uh, you know a university should be teaching me how to use this new technology that is it's a part of life, right? Uh, at the same time, it's not everything. I can't I can't make it a crutch, right? I can't just rely on this and have it think for me. And that's a lot of kind of the the spirit of what I saw in the chat in in our opening uh, question about what excites you and what uh, you know worries you about AI and you know I think we we share his sentiments so um, uh, we'll, we'll move on right uh, genuinely you know students you know if you give them a opportunity to cheat they, they a lot of them might take that opportunity right and um, you know, for different reasons. You know, it's always good to ask. Well, why do you feel like you need to cheat, right? Um, you know, and then and then go from there. But let's just just look at the uh, most obvious way that students can use this to uh, to 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 lie, right? On on an essay. So here's um, a prompt I gave it. It's kind of a generic, you know, tenth grade English level, you know kind of question while you, after reading Macbeth or, you know, some something along those lines, right? So I, I thought this was generic. It's not a great question or a great prompt, but it's something that, you know, it, it wouldn't shock me if I saw it in a um, 10th grade English class, right? And so that's, right, 150 word essay explaining why Macbeth is a tragic figure, right? Um, and so it gave me this really pretty, pretty good answer. So now here's, 10th grade uh, David in Mr. Revis's class, and I'm like, I, okay, I, I read Macbeth. I, I just don't, I don't, I don't have time to write an essay. So let's see what ChatGPT can do. So I type in, you know, that same prompt gives me this, and I'm like, oh, this is pretty good. Uh, but I think uh, my teacher's gonna know, you know, like, I mean, 
you know, look at the opening line, Macbeth, the titular character of William Shakespeare's renowned play. That really doesn't sound like me. So remember that this is a conversation, right? So uh, after it gives me this, I can reply to it and I can tell it, uh, write it like a 10th grader. And then it uh, uh, went a little too far, right? So it starts with, Macbeth is totally a tragic dude in Shakespeare's play, uh, you know, Coincidentally enough, I think that's probably a direct quote from me to my 10th grade English students at some point, I'm sure. But uh, uh, regardless of that, me as a student, I'm like, I can't turn that in as an essay, right? It's, it's too informal. So remember, this is a conversation and I can edit the conversation. And so uh, if I click on that little pencil button up there, right, the edit button, I can edit the prompt. So I can edit the prompt that I used in this conversation to produce this. And I can say, rather than write it like a 10th grader, um, go back to that original one that it produced and say, remove all complex language. And now that opening line that said Macbeth, the titular character in Shakespeare's renowned play, now it's Macbeth, the main character in Shakespeare's play, Macbeth is, yeah, that sounds more 10th grady, right? Like it's a little repetitive and yeah, okay, good. And I can take it even a step further and say, rewrite it so that it reads like a 10th grade student wrote it for his English class. Oh, and then it's, you know, then it made a few fixes. And then I'm like, well, I'm going to give it one extra little um, uh, fix, right? Just, just in case, little added bit of insurance here, because this was maybe a little too perfect, a little too on the nose. So include two grammatical errors and a misspelled word. And it just popped it up there, right? Um, all right, now you might be thinking like, man, so if my students put that much effort into cheating, you know, that they put into cheating into the essay, this would be a great essay, right? You know, but uh, uh, another observation in this too is that, well, you know, there's a certain level of sophistication that has to come in, in these, these prompts, right? Like where, a student is, uh, you know, like they have to think so much to be able to do this. And uh, well, not not quite. Uh, one, I'm putting this on the internet, right? It's gonna go on YouTube, uh, uh, but it's not my fault. Uh, this was already on YouTube. This is on on uh, on the internet already. So these, how to refine your prompts. Um, uh, many of your students have probably uh, seen this on TikTok, right? Uh, where students, uh, fellow students, uh, share a set of prompts to give uh, an AI to produce something that is hard to detect, right? And so, so that's what we're working with, right? This is the reality of, of life. Yeah, we could block this, but then we block this, and then there's something else that's going to, you know, take its place, and um, it, it's it's kind of a losing battle. So I think. We, should, we, we can take that one student's advice and rethink our assessments a bit, right? And so, um, so stay with me here. We're, we're going to uh, build on that idea here. So um, uh, side note, um, there, there's lots of inaccurate information on the internet. I don't know if you've heard, you know, that, right? Um, and there, it, it, there's even more... Uh, possibilities of inaccurate information uh, by using a different AI tools, especially large language models, right? So um, let me just give you an example here. Um, so uh, remember our book study? I don't know if any of you joined us for our summer book study. Uh, we, uh, <laughs> thanks DJ, yeah, that's fun. Um, so if, we, if you joined us, right, uh, there's a lot of paperwork that goes into getting that off the ground. Uh, among it is, uh, it has to be, uh, you know, anything that's going to cost money, you know, it's taxpayer money. And so we want to make sure that it's, uh, uh, you know, grounded in, in, in research, educational research. And so uh, to write the justification for that, I, you know, we had to provide research, you know, peer reviewed sources that say that, hey, book studies help or, you know, something along the topic. And so I thought, let me save some time. Let me ask ChatGPT if it could, you know, give me some some sources, right? Um, so I asked it. It produced this, right? It looks good, you know. And my now my my plan was I'm gonna, you know, 
find these sources and then that saves me time to go into like EBSCOhost or JSTOR or something and find the, uh, you know, um, the, the, these sources. But um, uh, so, so this is a, a edited answer. Here's the full answer. And uh, so basically what it, what it gave me was these, you know, I can't actually go into databases and find research, but if I could, it would look something like this. So it looks really real, but those aren't real sources, you know. Ah, so then yeah, we had to go into, you know, do, do research the old-fashioned way, which is which is fine, which is fine, right? But um, totally, someone could totally post something like that, and it looks real, and we, you know, we might think like, oh yeah, this is this is great. Um, and the ability of AI to produce, mass produce, uh, you know false or, or, or fake information is, is kind of mind boggling, right? Um, so one thing to um, help our students, and I think it's kind of a responsibility now, is to show them how to properly cite AI, right? Um, uh, the Purdue OWL, if you're familiar with that uh, site, uh, has that in, in its, uh, um, uh, resources. Uh, I gave you a link to another site here that it, 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 it's just, you know, like different ways uh, to cite using APA, MLA, Chicago 7, all that, but citing um, AI, right? And so, you know, so that's that's one thing, right? Um, you know, let's let the let students know that if you're using information that's produced by a robot, you, you know, you, you can't still can't claim it as your own because you weren't the one who claimed it, right? And so, so there's that. Um, but here's the bigger caution in this, right? Um, let me let me caution, uh, show you with with uh, an, an article here, right? So, uh, uh, this was, uh, yeah, this was on CNN uh, like not too long ago, so. Uh, Disney, New York Times, CNN, also uh, Washington Post, uh, Reuters, and you know other media companies are uh, blocking access to ChatGPT. And you're like, well, what does that mean? The reporters can't use ChatGPT to? Uh, well, no, that's that's not what they're blocking. So what they're what they're blocking is uh, uh, ChatGPT or other large language models, right? To uh, to access its uh, websites for information. So the way it, it works, if you're here last time, right, we kind of went over how, how this works, where um, the chat GPT or BART or whatever will scour the internet really fast and find information from different sources to put together a new piece of writing, right? Well, not from the New York Times and not from the Washington Post and not from Reuters and not from Disney and not from Amazon. Uh, right, because it's because now it's blocked, and so you know, uh, New York Times, uh, Washington Post, Reuters, right, all, all these uh, uh, these those media companies specifically have paid fact checkers, right? Like that is their job. They fact they check facts, right? And so when the you know the most reliable sources are the ones that are blocking the the searcher, right? then now you're now there's a problem right in fact uh this is in two weeks a little chart there uh on uh, you know it, there was a 10 percent bump just in two weeks when uh chat gpt announced that they won't be uh you know uh, uh using uh, there's a specific uh blocking tool so they said oh we're if companies have these blocking tools we're, we're not gonna you know, get information from them. As soon as they said that, within two weeks, the top 1,000, uh, or 10 percent of the top 1,000 websites said, oh, well, we're going to start using that, right? And so the information, uh, as more information is out there, the, the, the you know, um, the, the more that it's getting blocked and, you know, so, all right. So there's that. Here's a visual example of how things can go wrong, right? Um, do, you, do you remember uh, this uh, image from a uh, you know was a couple months ago? It might have been over the summer. Anybody see that? It just kind of went viral, and uh, you know people were like, "Man, you know, like uh, I think it was uh, uh, Drippy Pope. I think was the uh, uh, 
you know the the t the name of the image or whatever but it was like oh man wow this this is like a, a cool pope he's got a puffer jacket and check it well anyway it ended up being like no it was an ai produced image it's not real like none of it's real right um but you know it, it spread some uh you know some rumors and people are like wow can we really rely on this guy to be a like is he you know that looks like an expensive code is he misusing you know money and, and things like that and so you know and this was more of a, a funny thing right um and then uh uh this is a, a recent article also this is a little bit after so about six months after the the big reveal of you know chat gpt going public and you know being available to the public and uh uh you know the the story is that okay now we have this tool that can mass produce information it doesn't have to be real you can actually feed it false information right like um, you know, I could I could tell it, hey, write uh, ten different news articles uh, in the style of, you know, like the New York Times or in the style of Fox News or whatever, right? And uh, about how David Rivas is actually Canadian, right? I, I, I would love to be Canadian, but hey, I'm not, right? But I could write that. And it could give me 10 different articles that I could just throw all over the internet, right? Um, it, it could write thousands of articles in different styles about how I'm Canadian, and I could fill the internet with, you know, that false information. And, um, you know, and, and I could say, you know, not block it and so you know so you see the the dangers in this right i hope so um you know so word of caution right um uh so going back to my original mistake right i wanted to use chat gpt as a um a resource for for true academic research it is not that at least not yet right and this is one reason why it, it doesn't seem like it can be, right? Um, to make matters worse, here's some uh, visual examples, right, uh, of how imperfect AI is. So the two uh, images on, on, on the left are kind of grotesque if you look at the, the fingers, right? Um, I, I, apparently, uh, image producing AIs can't make fingers. You know, it just doesn't compute not yet at least like it's has a really hard time with fingers and so if you go back to that image of the pope you know the his left hand is pretty good but then the right hand that's holding the water bottle how's he even holding that water bottle it's like wait a minute yeah you know so that's like one the proportions are a little off too right um and then you know these are um just a couple of examples of how images don't really translate very very well right <laughs> Mr. Choate, that's funny. All right. Okay. So, um, oh, and then the other one is the sand sculpture. He's got like six fingers on one hand. So, all right. Um, okay. So, what can we do? All right. Well, AI detectors, right? Let's 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 look at those. Uh, let's see um, how we can use those to detect, um, you know, some some shady uh, goings on, right? And so we're gonna look at four specifically. Um, but I'm going to, again, say that uh, use caution when using these. Uh, the one I purposefully left out here that I think um, may be getting you, a, a lot of use is turnitin.com because I haven't been able to play with it um, as much, to, say, to be honest. And uh, um, But I, I think that the same applies. As, as we'll see with all of these, they're, they're kind of imperfect. Um, and, and so uh, these are all free-ish right which if you've got a good product you're gonna you know try to make money off of it right and so that's that's what these are uh the the two best tools are the ones at the bottom using the version history in google docs and this tool called draftback which is both of these are like uh like about 10 12 years old and um they're so they're old school but wow, chef's kiss they're still like super relevant and i'll show you why those two free tools are probably the best things you can use um, 
um, especially compared to these, uh, uh, you know, expensive tools that we're going to look at, right? So, uh, so use caution. Here's why. All right. Um, this uh, study by uh, performed by Stanford uh, not too long ago. Um, uh, the conclusion that 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 uh, the, the study found was that uh, overall the detectors are unreliable, especially when the like real human author is a non-native English speaker. You know, even if they are very fluent, but if English is not their native language, they often got flagged as AI produced. Uh, the same was true with neurodivergence writers, right? Uh, because what AI does it looks for patterns, and often if you've learned a second language after your native language, uh, you know it's often there. There are often patterns that are that you use, and so it it um, it it um, uh, triggers lots of false positives, right? And so. So for just for that alone, it's unreliable. But then there's other ways, right? And so uh, you can uh, click on the image there, and I'll take you to the uh, the article, and you can read all about it. All right. So let's let's start with undetectable. So this is uh, uh, again freemium, right? And so uh, how you can use it. One way to use this one is um, to uh, uh, copy and paste text into their text box. And it'll tell you if, you know, what, what are the chances that it's, uh, um, you know, AI produced, right? And so, and then you can set it to a uh, different setting. So it starts at university, but you could go to um, high school, middle school, elementary school, things like that. And then uh, the purpose, right? So, uh, you know, the, the, anyway, so let me show you. So here's, here's what I, I posted in the, um, that art, that uh, essay from from a little bit ago up there, right? The uh, uh, the Chat GPT produced the last version with the two mistakes, right? So I, I posted that in there, set it at high school, and the purpose is essay. Notice that I have fifteen thousand uh, character limit, and I only use one hundred and sixty five of those, right? Because after that, then I have to pay. So. All right, so I, I put that in there. That's the the full, um, you know, 150 word essay, you know, ish essay. And uh, if you notice at the bottom there, your content is detected as written by AI. Oh, undetectable can tell, right? And then not only that, underneath that, it tells you which detectors would actually um, uh, detect it, right? So GPT zero would. Um, OpenAI, which is ChatGPT, probably won't. So the other one called Writer probably won't. Copy leaks definitely will, etc. Right? But this one has an extra feature, right? So you can edit what you put into there to make it either more readable, more balanced in terms of syntax, or more human, right? So what if we click more human and then click the humanize button? What does it do, right? Uh, oh. Okay, remember you get you, you can do this, but you have two hundred and fifty free words to do this. I'm like, all right, okay, so I'm I'm I'm, I'm going to use this, and uh, hey, look at that. Um, it likelihood detected. It's all green down at the bottom. It 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 looks, you know, we think that this will not be detected by, uh, by any kind of software. I'm like, uh oh, but let's take a step back. Let's let's actually read it, right? Um. So the result here, it's Macbeth, a character in Shakespeare's play Macbeth is a figure. The, the writing's not great. It's like those creepy fingers, right? It's the reading version of those creepy fingers. So, you know, it's, it's not great. Sure, as a student, I could probably massage that to make it sound a little better, but if I'm going into to that much trouble, right? Uh, so, you know, this doesn't worry me so much because this is the uh, an undetectable, according to the version of, of student writing, is not great, right? But, you know, obviously there's potential to, to cheat with it. So let's let's keep going with this. Okay. So um, uh, I did want to point out that it does ask you that uh, 
you know, notice a little highlight there. I agree to the terms of service, i.e. no academic misconduct. I'm not using this to cheat, you know, click this box. Oh, okay. Well, as long as you say you're not, right? So, you know, but anyway. Okay, so now I, I took that and I put it into ChatGPT, right? Because ChatGPT, you can ask it, hey, did you write this? And it'll tell you, yeah, there's a likelihood that I wrote that, right? So, so I said, did you write this? And then pasted the document there or the uh, that essay, and it said, uh, no, I didn't write that, you know. And it told me what it's about. Like, oh, okay. Well, remember, it's a conversation. So then I said, okay, well, was it produced by AI? And it says, no, I don't really have, you know, the ability to say that it does, but it doesn't, it, it seems like it's a, a coherent, well-written analysis. But probably not. All right, but well, what about PT0 here? Okay, let me just mute that right there. Okay, so what about GPT0, right? Um, this is the, an another um, uh, detector. This is probably the first... Uh, a uh, famous one. You can read about it in the uh, the black banner there. L links you to an article that tells you about how you know they started this arms race with AI to um, you know like the detectors got more sophisticated, then the AI got more sophisticated. Now the detectors are more you know so it's this, this arms race. Uh, this one was uh, probably one of the first ones. And so uh, how did how did how did it do there? So. Um, I first put in my chat GPT produced essay, right? The, the one with the two mistakes in it. So I, I pasted it in there to check the originality and it said 54% chance that this was written by AI. You know, you're like, well, that's high, you know, wait, 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 wait. no, no, no. 54% chance that it was written. That means it's 50, 50, right? There's, you know, it's either. It was either a person or it was a robot. 50-50 chance. I don't know if I'm gonna if I'm gonna like, you know, kick a kid out of college for doing that, or you know, give a student an F for that. I, I don't I don't like those odds. That's that's you know. Not only that, um, you know, the sentences that are highlighted are the ones that are probably produced by AI. It couldn't detect it. Those right. Zero out of those 16 chances were detect. You know, that it said that it was AI. So it's like ah. Okay, so what about the one that I know was produced by AI as undetectable, right? Let's let's see how good that is, right? So remember, this is a fifty-four percent chance that this is uh, um, produced by uh, a robot, right? Whoa, two percent, two percent chance this was made by a robot. So this is the one that was made by a robot that was kind of lousy, right? Macbeth, a character in Shakespeare's Macbeth, is a figure. That one, right? Uh, that one, uh, two percent chance that it was written by a robot when we know it was written by a bot, right? Uh, that, I don't like that. That's see, this is unreliable. Um, but then I thought, wait a minute. What if I put something that I wrote? I know I wrote, and I'm going to put it in there, right? So I did that. I wrote this letter of recommendation for someone recently. And I put it in there, and sixty percent chance. Are you kidding me? What? I know I wrote this one. Yes, I used the template, but I used the template that I wrote. And ah, okay. So this is uh, this is pretty bad. Not only that, five out of the nineteen sentences are likely produced by AI, but I wrote it. Ah, man. Yeah, this made me feel a little robotic and a little, brought me down a little bit. But um, you know, GPT zero. Uh, it's pretty popular to use, and so uh, included a video to show you how to use it if you're if you're still interested. Okay, so this, there's this other one, copy leaks. Okay, so let's let's try that one. All right, the only enterprise one. I don't know what that means, but yeah, it's, uh, that's that's their thing. <clears throat> All right, so I put in the uh, Macbeth is a real tragic figure one, the one with the two mistakes from uh, ChatGPT in there to see if it's. Uh, uh, produced by robot according to them they're like yeah that whole thing just smells of, of robot yeah so okay okay cool well what about this one the uh the undetectable produced one nope this is human text completely well no it's not so again unreliable but then i was like wait what about my letter of recommendation what is this uh oh you know so i, I put it in hit check and this is human Woo i'm human again Feel, feel made me feel better about myself. So, all right. 
Okay, now a couple of cautions, right? Um, we got to, we got to, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying don't use these detectors. I'm saying use caution when using them, right? False positives are are a thing, and um, so as are false negatives, right? As, as we saw. Okay, so here's a better tool. I think is using DraftBack and um, the revision history in Google Docs. So my recommendation, if you're going to have uh, like take home writing, which is uh, you know, uh, you know, like one extreme would be like we'll never take any writing home ever at all. I'm going to watch you write it all the time, right? It's unsustainable and just not practical, right? So uh, what do you do? That this it helps. It's not completely foolproof, but it helps, right? Um, if you have every writing assignment uh, must be uh, created and turned in to Google Classroom. Um, that's a, a, a good practice. The reason for that is that when students turn in a Google Doc through Google Classroom, they transfer ownership to the teacher. So now you become the owner of that document when they turn it in. And if you are the owner of that document, you can do this. So let me show you. Here's a document that I both own and wrote, right? Okay, so this was me processing the, uh, you know, like the news about ChatGPT when it first came out, and I was like, I need to, I, I you know, I, I need to express myself through writing here, so I did this, right? Okay, so DraftBack. Uh, first of all, I'll show you. DraftBack is an extension for Chrome that you can add to your Chrome browser, but it works on Google Docs, right? Um, and so um, once you install it, uh, you get this little button up here, if you can see that, the draft back button, and it tells you how many revisions were made to that, to that document. So I made 8,276 revisions apparently to this, right? But not only that, you can click on it and you can play the uh, revision, right? And I, I, you can speed it up too. So here's uh, the fast version of that. So you can see, oh, nope, I'm not even, I'm not sharing. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Okay, now, all right. So you can see uh, how that document was was written. It, you know, um, it's sped up, obviously, but you can see that you know things are being written and deleted. So if you see a giant piece of text that suddenly appears there, you know that it was probably copied and pasted, right? And so this is what I I used to use way back in the day when kids would, used to copy and paste off of Wikipedia, right? You know, it's so old school, but anyway, so there's, there's that. Okay. Um, going back to the document, you can also, uh, use the revision history, right? And which gives you the same kind of idea. And so if you go into tools and go to, uh, oh, wait, oh, yeah, let's see. It's uh, review suggested compare document citation. I should have practiced this one. I forgot where this is. Notification preferences accessibility. Oh, no, I'm sorry. There's the revision history as a button. Apologies. Live TV. You know, what, what can I say? So if you click on that little uh, clock uh, image up at the uh, top right hand corner of your Google Docs, right, it gives you the revision history of docs that you own, right? And so then you can see, even if it was somebody else who made those revisions, you can see those, right? So I can go back to like, you know, I don't know, January 15th and see the revisions that I made on January 15th, maybe 17th, I made more revisions, I don't know. Or let me go back to January 10th. Okay, see, so uh, the green highlights are the revisions that I made, and so you can see what those are. And so if there's a giant piece of text that's highlighted green. Oh, like this, like, oh, maybe I copied and pasted that from somewhere, right? You know, if it was really big, all right? So anyway, so there's uh, revision history, right? And draft back. Uh, two free tools that are available to you and I think are more reliable than the a lot of the, um, uh, 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 the uh, uh, detectors that are available to, to, to catch students on, on some of these things. Now, 
the spirit of what we want to do is uh, we, we want students to learn, right? We're not like setting traps for them, right? And I, I've been there too. You've probably been there where we're like, ah, oh, ha, ha, we're going to catch you on this, right? This cartoon villain, you know, going like this with our fingers, like we're going to catch you doing something naughty, right? Uh, but again, you know, that's not the point of what we want to do. We want to instruct, right? We want students to learn. Um, and, you know, sometimes it, it might mean like, Showing them like, hey, look, I can do this thing. I can see if you copied and pasted something from it. So I want you to, to write it, right? And then you can see um, almost in real time how, how quickly they can do that. So uh, next uh, thing I just kind of want to show you here, uh, this guy is Soverell. Mr. Soverell has this website. He's a blogger. And he made this uh, infographic that, I, you know, it's been kind of going, making the rounds on, on the uh, teacher webs and stuff like that, right? And uh, I, I thought it was helpful. Um, he shares four um, characteristics of um, chat GPT resistance assignments, right? So things that are uh, uh, characteristics of assignments that will help AI proof those assignments, right? So one would be to make it current or modern, um, have some kind of reference to something post 2021. Um, this has a lot of benefits. One, it's probably more interesting to your students for one, even if you're comparing something ancient to something that happened yesterday, right? Something like that, uh, because ChatGPT specifically doesn't have uh, access to information prior to that, or, or after that rather, after uh, 2021. The other thing is using hands-on learning, like uh, performance tasks, uh, you know, like those things you, you have to, you, you literally have to make or perform something, right? You can have AI help you in the process, but the actual product that you make is not necessarily, uh, you, you, you have, a person has to make it, right? Um, and then uh, the other thing is using videos and images in your prompts. So you know, as of right now, um, most AI can't read graphs and images and interpret those images, right, um, super accurately, at least. And so, you know, that's that's one way. And then uh, just, you know, motivating students to, to value the process and not the product. And for us as teachers, I think that's really important. Sometimes we, we, we lose that perspective, right? It's not the product that's in and of itself that we value, it's the process, right? Because that's where most of the learning happens, right? Not, not you know, when, you know, it's, it's, it's the, uh, the chef behind the kitchen tasting the soup, that's where the learning happens, right? Not when it goes out to the, um, the customer, right? You, you, it's hard to make changes at that point, right? So anyway, so that's where the learning happens. So that's some of the principles that he um, uh, shares. And so here, uh, I'm, I'm gonna give you three assignments that use those principles. And you, hopefully you can adapt these in, in some way in your own content, um, you know, or it'll spark an idea, like, cause these are just using those principles, right? It's not like go use this uh, assignment unless you wanna use this assignment by all means. So one, and, and by the way, this is pre, chat GPT, this is like, you know, I would, I would be using this like 10 years ago and, and it, it worked then. I think it can work even better now, right? So the idea here is that you give uh, students, um, I would do this in groups, but you could do this individually or in pairs, uh, a set of 20 or so index cards and I would have them write down a list of uh, names, topics, uh, themes, uh, images, terms from our current unit, and, you know, so after completing it, so this is an example of Romeo and Juliet, right? And then I would give them a blank one that they could use just in case they need it, right? And so the assignment is, is something like this, like arrange and rearrange these cards according to the connections that you see, right? Um, so you could categorize them, make two columns, make a flow chart, do uh, multiple columns, you know, that, that sort of thing. So uh, however it makes sense to you, when you're satisfied with the visual that you've made, write an essay explaining that map, that, that 
that visual. Now, you could tell ChatGPT write an essay about Romeo and Juliet using the following terms, right? But that's not what I'm asking, right? I'm asking uh, the student to write an essay explaining the image that they just made, right? The visual, right? So a robot can't interpret that visual, not yet, at least, right? So, um, so you know, see if you can incorporate that in, in your, or the principles of that, you know, have students rearrange things and explain their image, their rearrangement of things. All right. The other one is um, what I call the no-show chart. Um, and I combine that with uh, Flipgrid, now known as Flip because they're cool now, right? I don't know, they changed their name. But uh, so, uh, you know, probably all assigned a, um, uh, you know, something that looks like this, like a study guide, where on one side you have terms and on the other side, you know, of, the, of this T chart, you know, you have a space for students to write what they know about that term. So, know the things I want you to know and the things I want you to show me that you know about it, right? And this uh, specifically was about Julius Caesar. So, sorry about the all the Shakespeare here. I, it, 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 I just realized, like, all my examples have to do with Shakespeare. I don't know. Speak what you know, I guess. I don't know. But my apologies. But um, you know, whatever the topic is, you know, have a list of those uh, the terminology, and then a, a space for students to write in what they know. And now, you know, you, what you might be thinking is what I'm thinking. Like, wait a minute! Not only can they use ChatGPT, they can use the internet to help them with this, right? Open book, open note, open internet, whatever. Just give me, you know, give whatever limits you want. But all right, so so they've made a study guide. The, the hope is that then the students will study the guide, right? Uh, but I like tricking my students into studying, right? And so here's uh, here's what I would do with that then, is uh, now use uh, uh, Flipgrid in combination with this. And so, so they have that list. And then part two here is where I uh, ask them, okay, choose whatever you think are the top five from this list. All right, so now I'm asking students to make judgment calls. There's no necessarily real super correct answer, but they have to discriminate between one or you know term and, and the other one. And uh, um, so, um, so they may choose whatever the top five uh, most important uh, topics are or terms, and then it, in 45 seconds or a minute, you know, if you're feeling generous, give them a minute. But I, I like the 45 second rule. Uh, record a 45 second flip grid explaining everything you know about those topics or explain why you think that these are, are the most important things. 45 seconds, not quite enough time to do that. Even a minute, it's, it's kind of hard. And so what, um, I, you know, when I've used this with students, what they tell me is like, you know what I had to do to get it under that time? I had to rewrite this thing or I had to write myself a script and then read it and then do like multiple takes. And then I said, ha ha, tricked you into studying, right? So that's, uh, you know, th that's that's the point of this one. And so here's, a, uh, I gave you an example with uh, one of uh, uh, my s adult students. This is a student at Cal State Bakersfield. So I, I kind of demonstrate these different assessment techniques with, with them and by making them go through it. And so, uh, you know, you can, you can watch it. I have her, her permission. She knows that uh, adults are going to be watching her uh, do, do this. And so, uh, but the idea was uh, respond to that prompt up there. I, I had them read um, a section out of Culturally Responsive Teaching in the Brain, great book, and, uh, you know, do some explanation. And so one of the critiques she gave me from this was like, yeah, uh, I see what you did there. Like, I, you know, I had to practice and then repractice the you know the information and then i had to condense things so then there were things i had to actually take out you know so i had all this information i had to figure out what what does rebus not want me to be able to 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 know and what do i what does he want me to say and so there's just all this critical thinking that went into that right so sure she could have asked chat gpt to write that script for her right but at the very worst still had to read it out loud and so i had to process that information at the very worst right so all right last one i want to show you then is uh 
uh, this uh, procedure for creating performance tasks. So it's an acronym because we in education, we love our acronyms, right? So this one's GRASPS, right? And it stands for Goal, Role, Audience, Situation, Product, Standards for Criteria or, uh, or Success, rather, is the last S. And so the idea is that you can use those uh, criteria to design, as the teacher, design a performance task or a uh, task scenario for students to to make or perform something to show their learning, right? And so anyway, you can fill in the some or all of those blanks to help you um, develop the the prompt or the assignment for that. Right? So you can find that there. Um, if you click on that link there, it'll take you to a PDF, you know, with some examples and then some ideas for what in, uh, the role of an audience would be and things like that. So I've, I've found that pretty helpful to uh, design uh, uh, sort of summative assessments for, for things like that. All right. Okay. So um, Europe, uh, you know, and European universities, especially we're, we're on top of this. Um, the uh, University of Amsterdam specifically has an entire page for their staff on AI proofing their assignments. And so they have, um, so I adapted this from that page. I linked it there. It's very lengthy. So I took a, a few of the concepts and just kind of summarized them myself. Didn't use an AI for that, by the way. That's the, you know, uh, maybe I should have, maybe might, might have been, might have saved me some time, but I actually wanted to read through them anyway. But anyway. So, so here's some uh, uh, characteristics or some things to keep in mind when designing assignments. Uh, you know, one is to actually discuss what academic integrity is and why is it important to, um, you know, not cheat, right? Cheating in all forms is destructive, right? I mean, I challenge you to think of a way where, where how it's not, right? Um, so. Uh, it's worth being constructive, like build yourself up, build your knowledge uh, self up, right? Uh, and so, you know, have that conversation with students and maybe even let them know like, hey, this is where I draw the line for cheating and let them know, make it, make it clear, right? Um, it, it's also not a good practice to base a whole grade on one final assignment. I know in high school, we don't necessarily do that that often, but uh, you know, specifically in, in universities, that's a, that's a thing. I remember, you know, being in you know, college classes often and all the work I did was never graded and except for that final project or that final assessment or that final essay or something. Right. Um, also supervise students during the assessments. And, you know, and I think that's just a great practice, right? Um, you know, the, the trouble with homework is that students go home and do the work without the expert in the room, right? And so isn't it better to be the expert in the room to help students along with, with that kind of thing? Um, more oral assignments, I mean, that's just not a bad thing in general, right? Um, you know, having students learn to communicate orally is a good skill, right? It requires critical thinking, higher level, higher, higher order thinking and all that. And so that's, that's good. Flip can help with that, like that assignment I, I shared. Um, focusing on the process rather than the final product, I just can't emphasize that enough, right? Um, you know, the journey is where the learning happens, right? And then the product is uh, ideally should be a reflection of that journey, right? Um, making your assessments more personal, uh, also just a great idea because uh, that, you know, there's more potential for buy-in if, you know, I have, you know, a, a horse in the race, for example, right? So if the students right. see the value in the assignment, that's, that, that's great. And then uh, show them how to, how to cite, uh, you know, if, if they are going to use AI to help them with um, it, it get, gathering information, well, show them how to cite it. And finally, uh, performance tasks. So they recommend doing performance-based assessments. Um, performance and uh, scenario-based assessments, I think, is, is the term they use. So, all right. So, so there's all that. And one last shameless plug for tomorrow. We'll, we'll have one last uh, session on these on using AI as an educator to save time. And that's sort of the... The, the focus of that one is, uh, you know, let, let's, it, hey, we live in a world with robots now, right? 
how can we uh, help? The, how can we use them? Help us, right? Uh, one thing I like to do, I'm not just always polite to the robots, you know, to ChatGPT. As often as I ask it things, you know, I'll, I'll often say please, just because, you know, I, I figure, you know, be nice for our, you know, our, you know, the the robots that are going to take over at some point. Might as well be polite to them, be on their good side. No, but uh, also, um, if you missed any of these, or if you want to revisit any of this, they'll be on YouTube, and all the uh, slides will be in the description, so you can easily find them. Okay. Um, so, last but not least, want to get your feedback on this. Um, you know, how help? You know, was this helpful? Uh, you know, let us know if there's anything else you, any any questions that you uh, might uh, need. Or, or have you know so there's the link the code is ai and today's date ai 10 18 23 and so please do um use the uh you know that that open space there to yeah you know, just give, give give us some feedback on um how this went and uh you know what what gaps are still there You're like what else do you need right um but with that have a wonderful day have a wonderful student free day and uh, hope to see you tomorrow and uh, around the neighborhood.